Ready? <laughs> yeah. So we just got back from Cuba uh, and we were there for a week and I thought that we would put together a little video um, of some of the tips and tricks or tips I guess mostly um, for those that are thinking of going to probably anywhere in Cuba I would think. Yeah. It really doesn't matter in Cuba but there's definitely some things to be aware of. Um, so I kind of have like five maybe six points tips to to kind of look 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 at before you go um and then uh right at the end depending on who you are and depending on how this makes you feel maybe you don't care but for me it's a it, it may have been or may be a reason that i think we may not ever go back to cuba again yep right so make sure you stay stay till the end Okay, so I got my little, my, my notes, my, my talking points, I guess. Um, first off, and this was something that uh, we kind of fell into, but also a lot of people ended up coming and talking to me in regards to, uh, they were just as kind of confused as I was, was that uh, it's about like exploring the resort that you're in. So if it's a small resort, that's probably not that big of a deal. Right. right. But if it's a larger resort, so we were we were staying at the re, the Grand Mutu, uh, Cayo Guillermo. Cayo Guillermo. Cayo, she'll say it. Um, and lovely resort, really nice. Uh, people are great. The resort was really nice. The rooms are really good. You kind of walk into it. The pools are there. And then you go past the pools and there's like a gazebo thing. And we were like, that's a rocky beach. That doesn't look anything like the photos that we saw online. Yes. Right? Yeah. And <clears throat> there was a really nice beach. You just had to kind of walk to it. So you kind of either walked along the beach, kind of to the right. Yeah. Right? Or uh, you could take a path that kind of wound itself through the different hotel pieces. Yeah. You would go through... Some of the buildings where the rooms are, and then a restaurant, and a little outdoor sitting area, and then you got to the beach. Got to the beach. And it wasn't far, overly far once you knew where it was. It was a decent walk. Right. But... Like, it was a good 10 minute walk. For sure. From our room, for sure. Yeah. Um, but I, there were so many people. I'd be on the gazebo taking pictures, for instance, and people were just like, this is the beach? And I was like, so, no. So, make sure you take that first day maybe it's the day that you arrive or whatever take some time just kind of explore the resort or the area you are because you don't want to miss something because you just didn't know it was there right right so a lot of us and there may have been signs but i didn't really i didn't notice, notice any signs. i didn't notice a lot of signs in general i had actually asked people if they had saw a sign for the beach and everyone i asked they were like no hmm. so you think they might do that. Yeah, and I'm sure on the like the little map that shows where all the buildings and stuff is, there might be a beach there. But mm -hmm. usually, you're you even found that map a little confusing that as to nice. finding a room. Yeah. Right. So. Let's say we were in building one B and nowhere. Right. I still have never found a one B anywhere. Right. Yeah. All right. So. That was that was point six, point five. Um, this was probably really, this was really helpful for us. And I really didn't uh, think about doing this actually before these kind of trips. We have another well, trip was, coming up next year. It was, it was, yeah, it was our friend who's getting married in Costa Rica who said, hey, there's a Facebook group for the resort we're going to. We should join it so that any information we get. Yeah. So then Greg was like, oh, I wonder if there's one for this hotel. And there was. So, uh, recommendation is go on Facebook. I would think nowadays uh, most big resorts, especially, uh, will have their own Facebook group. They're moderated by someone that's either in the marketing area or they'll have moderators that have been assigned that were... I know in, in the hotel we were at, there were some moderators that were like frequent travelers to that resort. Yeah. Um, so they could approve or answer questions. But it's great because there was a lot of questions that even uh, I asked before we went and you could see other people's questions that they had and you're like, oh yeah, no, I'm, I'm going to follow that one because that would be a question that I would have. Yeah. So I Lots think... Lots of good information. Yeah, tons of information. And it, it gets you meeting people. 
Yeah, most definitely. And if you're a person that likes to socialize or go there to, you know, do whatever. It's it's a great way to see photos, to, to talk to people that are going to be there in the same same time you are or just left, et cetera, et cetera. Have competing photo challenges. Have competing photo <laughs> challenges, which I ended up having with one of the people that were there as well. So that was kind of cool. Um, number four. Four. Uh, currency. So Cuba has... They, they have or had a different currency in the past, which they've kind of gotten rid of now. So they used to have the CUC, right. which was a currency that was only used on resorts, and then the CUP, which is their regular currency. Which is the peso. The CUC is gone. Right. No more. You don't have to worry about that anymore. And the resort and the airport and the market all took Canadian and American. The airport... We tried to buy water. She didn't let us. But the re- the resort took it. But even the stores in the resort were credit card. And in the resort, yeah, yes. and in the market, the stores, not the little market setups, yeah, were credit card. So anything that kind of was like really excursions. official looking and excursions looked like an actual store. Credit card. Credit card is what they wanted. And no American credit card. No American credit card. So if your bank has any kind of association in the U.S., then it would fail. But if you're coming from Canada like us, uh, TD, Scotia, RBC, CIBC, all should have no issues at all with the credit card. Here's my uh, Capital One. Yeah, which well, I was, uh, was going to say. Yeah, it, but it's not Capital One anymore. It's actually Because it's CIBC because Capital One used to have issues because they were a U.S. Right. But they kind of got bought out by... CIBC or under its umbrella or something like that. Well, no, my my like it's a Costco one, so it just switched to CIBC. So oh, I, I see your, your credit card, card. Yet, but <clears throat> it's technically not right because I do have a Capital One card, but we never used it. No. So that one, that one, I, I'm not too sure, but the other ones were fine. Um, but yeah, tipping and everything like that. The the recommendation is because they don't necessarily like coins because it's supposedly very hard for them to exchange anything in the bank with the coins because the the banks don't want them so because canadian dollars the lowest paper bill is a five that can be a fairly big tip so the recommendation is of course to have some canadian money so for anything that's going to be five or ten or fifteen dollars but when you're tipping let's say your wait staff or anything like that have some american dollar bills because then you can just tip a US dollar. Saying that though, they will obviously accept the coins and we were asked many times like can we exchange for you? So be prepared if you have some bigger bills to exchange those coins for these people and then you can just bring the coins home. Right. You'd see them actually at the bars. They have little little things and all the loonies and toonies they just have there. So if anybody wanted change they would just instead of giving them back the US dollars they would give them back the Canadian loonies Mm -hmm. so that they didn't have to deal with them. So for me, I'd rather not have to put them through that. So it's up to you. Um, Take both. Let's just take both. U.S. and Canadian and of course credit cards. Um, Number number three, uh, and this is um, definitely brings you suntan lotion and bring like cooling gel and aloe vera stuff because if you buy it here in Canada, it's like a quarter of the price of buying it at a resort um and be smart with your lotion use so you don't ruin your vacation yeah i uh well (laughs) that's not completely fair because i was putting lotion on and i just missed Missed. a spot that's why i said be careful yeah but there's only if if you're a solo traveler or something like this you just that's going to be hard and you just have no idea i burnt under my armpit here like I, i and it burnt really bad even though I thought I got lotion there. Um, but it is important to bring that because the sun is hot, the UV is strong, um, and it's expensive to buy that stuff there. So yeah, save your money. We were in the shade for days and still got really good colors. Yeah, so, so that that's a big thing. Um, the other thing that we brought, but I didn't use, and didn't, I, I actually didn't even know we brought it, but you said we brought it with us, we was bug spray. Because at least in the resort we were at, um, down at the beach, I, I didn't really notice it till I was laying on a, my beach chair and I was kind of face down looking at the sand and there's all these like little sand, sand mites or fleas. sand fleas or sand bugs, whatever. Um, my legs, 
they're they're covered they're they're covered in bug bites and this is we've been home now for two days two full days mm -hmm. and i didn't even notice it much when we were there no and i didn't ever notice the bugs biting no like it was never like oh. and we were only on the beach like one day. one day and then we walked down to the beach for just to jump in the ocean and come back out we were normally at the pool and yeah like i'll put video of my my calves they're just they're covered so um and i got them on my elbows i got them on my like my hip area like they're everywhere um so definitely bring some kind of bug spray i would try to make sure if you are trying to get any kind of spray uh, i don't know if they have it for that but have it so that it's like environmentally friendly because if you're going to be hopping in the ocean and doing all that kind of stuff you don't want to be leaving chemicals behind no i would think so you but one on amazon yeah so just get something like that put it on with with the rest of your stuff um you're going to cuba so uh the the food just kind of be aware that you're going to cuba not because of the food experience it is an experience for sure but not like going to mexico or going to jamaica or anything like that where the food is like extravagant and fantastic it's definitely basic yeah it's basic and, and if you're a finicky eater you may be a little like now we never never went hungry no never went hungry but there were a lot of like bins of food where it says beef and you're like i don't know mm -hmm. Think trust that's that it is right yeah and especially now you know and, and the ho the hotels don't like to promote this by any means um so just kind of be aware of it too is that because of the war whenever you guys maybe this war is over when you guys are watching but as of now the war okay. with russia and ukraine um cuba is having all kinds of issues getting food because uh those areas over there were areas that they actually got stuff because, of course, they can't get anything from the U.S. And now they can't get anything from there. So I would say during our seven days, even ordering sometimes the same food, like a hamburger or something, it was very different. Like one day it was just a hamburger, and then one day you had it with no cheese, and then one day you had it and there was cucumbers on it, and one yeah. day you had it. So And it was because they were probably running low on things. Yeah. We had heard from from people that had their kids up at one of the bars, and the bars ran out of sp like Sprite, like that kind of drink. It was it was gone. About halfway through our vacation, two three days left. Margaritas, not margaritas. And um, yeah, no. Well, the one bar, no pina coladas. No pina coladas so and no mojitos. Mojitos. Yeah. They were they were gone. Uh, even when we went to the a la carte's, it was funny because you'd get the menu. And we went to all three. So they had a Cuban at ours, a Cuban, an Italian, and a Indian. Indian. Um, you'd look at the, the the menu which they gave you, and you'd say, "I'll have this," and they'd be like, "Yeah, we don't have that." Okay. So. And you'd get pre pretty much you'd get something that was laid out a little fancier, but it was food that you could have got at the buffet. Yeah. Right. So um, just kind of be aware, even if you're going to the a la carte's. You're doing it so that you're just you get to dress up maybe a little bit nicer and you get to be in a room with only. It's an experience. Yeah, it's just it's nicer because you're you're served instead of having to go out and get all this stuff. But again, it's food is not the reason you go to Cuba. And if you are really finicky and you are someone that requires and likes seasoning and stuff like that, bring bring some with you. So bring bring some ketchup or bring some salt and pepper or hot sauce or. Mayo packets. Mayo packets or whatever you can get to throw in your luggage. So it may it may make, make your experience a little better. Yeah, I saw post people brought wraps and bread and peanut butter and... Butter. Butter. Butter just in general because they ran out of butter a couple times. Uh, so yeah, whatever you can fit in your, in your check baggage. Yeah. That you want. I, I would think if we were to ever go back, mm -hmm. which I don't know right now... Um, I would definitely say the two of us need to get for one bigger check luggage so that we can carry stuff. Because there's no way we could bring anything extra. And we really didn't bring a lot with us. No. Well, it even right. just one bag. Yeah, just something that's bigger. Um, last but not least, 
last but not least, where am I here? Um, and this is this is this is number one, uh, and it's tied in with why uh, we, for one, probably wouldn't go back again. And for those of you that have watched my channel here uh, and just know me personally, uh, I love photography and video and 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 part of my holiday and me going away and getting away is the ability for me to take my cameras and be able to take photos and video and, and that's just a very very relaxing part of the holiday for me so it allows me to do that and shoot stuff and there's no pressure if it turns out great it does and if it doesn't it's not a big deal um, but it's it's something that it's it complements the fact that I'm getting away right right um, that's what you like to do. Right? That's what I like to do. So, um, when we went, I had my camera bag, uh, and this this part part is about camera gear because a lot of us take cameras with us. And I didn't see a lot of it in Cuba actually. There was probably only one or two people that I saw with a, like a little point and shoot. Everybody else was just like rocking mm. their cell phones. Yeah. Uh, me, of course, I had a camera bag. In my camera bag, I had. You may have gone a little overboard. Yeah, but that wouldn't be a little overboard anywhere else. That, like No, I'm just saying as to what you actually end up using. Sure. Um, I probably could have cut down on a few things. But I had one camera with two lenses. Uh, I had my Insta360 camera, two of those uh, Insta360 Go, uh, and my little ZV-1. Really, that was, that was what I had. And it was... So that I you had, had some flashes and yeah, I had a flash and batteries and memory cards, and right? Things you bring with you yeah. when you and my laptop, of course, I need my laptop. Um, so I've traveled with that kind of arrangement of camera gear everywhere. Yeah, never ever had an issue, ever had an issue. So uh, I don't know if it was part of the ex some of it. Maybe at the beginning was a little bit possibly my own fault because I was holding the camera in my hand um, so I was shooting on the plane anybody who watched the video that came out yesterday of the our, our little trip video um, there's footage on the plane of course so I had my little 360 camera that I was shooting on the plane in the airport here in Halifax we get off the plane I was just shooting us getting off the plane but at that point in time I turned it off I had my hoodie in my hand I had the camera I'm my hoodie down here pulling my luggage. So we get into the airport in Keo Coco and I go through one of the passport control. Passport control. Mary goes through a different one. She goes all the way through. About 10 minutes later, I come through because uh, she was, you had to get your picture taken, whatever, and give them like the documentation or whatever it is. And I was holding my my Insta360 camera in my hand, and then she's like, "I need you back further." So I took my backpack off and all this, put it on the ground, put the camera and everything on the ground. And at that point in time, she pulled somebody else over and wanted to know what I did for a living, wanted to know why we were here. Uh, she just she she basically grilled me on everything. Right? Okay, whatever. Finally, let me through. We go to pick up our. Well, then you put no, your... I swear. We go through security. Yep. Through the X-ray part. And they X-rayed it. Did they X-ray it at that point? Yeah. Yeah. And I went through. Yeah, and then we were just waiting for our check bags. Right. And we got our check bags. Yes. I can't remember. No, they came no. and got you. They came and got me again and pulled me and. Rescanned. Re Rescanned my bag. Fine. Then we went through and got our luggage. Yep. And I was, we were about to leave. They came back again. And then this time. They were asking all kinds of questions. Yeah. And when you've been to Cuba before, where else have you traveled? What do you do for a living? Where, where are you here? All the questions that I had asked or, or answered to the very first person. By this, she's got your passport. She's writing down information. And then she takes my passport. She's writing down information. I'm like. Yeah. And then she, at that point, she pulled another person over. Yeah. Right. And then, uh, did they put my stuff through again? Yeah. After with with after the check a good bag. Five minutes. Yeah, with the check bag all it through. It took both of us and put our check bag through the the, the X-ray, and we had to go through the scanner again. Again. And then 
we were like, okay, good. Can we go yet? And then she was like, to Mary, you're staying here. That was a man. Said man, to me. you're staying here. And I am going with them. So I go back out of security all the way through to where you first come in with the plane. Um, and they put me in a little room with like five people. And we're just drilling me in again with all these questions until the point where I said, do you want to see? Because I, I didn't know if it was because I had this camera in my hand. I'm like, do you want to see what's on this camera? And he's like, yes. And I'm like, here. And there was three videos on this camera, two from inside the actual airplane and one from uh, the Halifax airport. And at that point, he's like, okay, well, you can, you can go. Basically, we got onto the bus and the bus left. I'm pretty sure they were waiting for us. Yeah, we were like the last ones. Right. Much. So anyways, that kind of ruined that day for me, for sure, because I was just stress level. The rest of the holiday, whatever, uh, we ended up coming back, of course, through it. And we were both like, I wonder what's going to happen. Yeah, and they took all that info down, yeah. so I don't know what the, they actually did with it. No. Like, so, obviously flagged it. Yeah, so obviously the going in experience was bad. The trying to leave Cuba experience was five times worse. Because uh, not only now were they going through all my stuff, uh, numerous times, like they scanned, you said, because I was in a room by myself for most of it. They scanned, so you went through the x-ray, they scanned your bag, then yeah. the lady took everything out of your bag, scanned that and your bag again. Then they took you into a room, they scanned your carry-on at least three more times while you were in the room, and various like parts of it. Yeah. Then I'm sitting there waiting and I look up and out of the x-ray machine comes my checked luggage and then Greg's. I'm like, so they're scanning our checked luggage and Greg's checked luggage, they shaking it and turning it on the side and shaking it and flipping it over and scanning and scanning and scanning. And I'm just like, what? Then And in my check bag, I have a bottle of rum and some more camera gear. So if they're shaking it all, who knows? They could have broke stuff. They could have. They could have broke that bottle and it would have had rum all over my camera gear. And then they have the dogs, the drug dogs come and they're sniffing the bags and I'm just like. Yeah. And then I'm in the room and they're unpacking everything. And of course there's a language barrier a little bit. So they, luckily there was one lady, that one the, with the red, that she could speak English fairly well. And of course I had to explain everything. I had to go through my computer, show them all the photos that I've taken, everything. Uh, every piece of gear I had, I had to explain it to them, and half the time they had no idea what I was talking about. So and you're, they took you're, it out and scanned it again. Yeah, I was in that room. So we were over an hour. Yeah. yeah, between an hour and an hour and a half, being grilled by like five, six people. Oh yeah, they kept switching out. Yeah, and then Mary's like, "What's going on here?" And I'm they're standing like, standing there just like. Uh, Oh, no, don't worry, lady. It's just a routine check. I'm like, there's nothing routine about this. It's never happened to us before. Yeah, it's not routine because if it was routine check and uh, random check, uh, I wouldn't have been just me picked both times. both times and nobody else, just me. So because of that, here's my final recommendation. Uh, if you are going to Cuba, which I will never go again, guaranteed, never go to Cuba again, um, just just bring a cell phone that's it just bring your cell phone because and the thing that this greg said many times is that every single person walking through that airport had a, a camera because they all had cell smart phones. phones yeah and like i don't know what big secrets were filming at the cayo coco airport in cuba nothing big military installation but like, just because i had a camera in a bag i'm not shooting anything it's in a bag no. like <laughs> I'm the only person that has camera gear packed away. And then, so he's in the room for over an hour, and then we're like, okay, you can go. And we go to go, and they're like, oh no, we need you to go through the x-ray again. I'm yeah. like, he's been in a room with you for an hour, he has not left. What yeah. is exactly, is what are you going to find on me appear? now? Yeah. And then I'm like, if they find something now, then it's, it's been quite planted. obvious it's been planted, because you haven't left that room. That's right. So, Cuba... Our resort, That's the people scary. at the resort, Cuba Airport, Cuba government, Cuba, never going back. Never. So, take that with some warning. Uh, I wish 
we've we've been there before and it was a great experience but this has just ruined it for me because if i can't bring a camera with me then i might as well go somewhere else well, and to be honest, they've got you like your name in that. So. Yeah, who knows? It'll, it'll happen again the next time. I'm sure time. it will. Right? I'm so. sure there's something in the system that will pop tag up. me because of my passport. Whether you have, whether you bring a single piece of equipment or not. Yeah. So, no. So take that. Take that as warning. All right, guys. That's it. That's our tips. If you are going to Cuba, and the long-winded version of why we'll never go back. All right. Like, comment, share, subscribe. Let me know your experience, and uh, we'll see you guys next video. Later.